This is Happiness Solved with America's Happiness Coach, Sandy Scarlatta. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I am so happy you're here. So you may have noticed the music is a little bit different. I thought I would change things up a little bit. So before I introduce today's guest, I want to talk a little bit about gratitude. So here we are. We're approaching the holidays. 2021 is coming to an end. Maybe that's a good thing for some people. I'm always one that you know gets excited for a new year. So gratitude is the quickest way to shift your thoughts from maybe negative or, or stressful into a positive state. There's always other people that have worse off circumstances than you do. So it, it's while it's easy during the holidays because you know we we want everything to be special for your family. We want to get the perfect gift for people and things like that. And and you know this year things may be a little bit different as we all know the the logistically things are not getting to places the way that we're used to. We're not getting that instant gratification many times. So I just challenge everyone during this holiday season, throughout the day, as often as you need to, just take a few minutes and focus on everything that you have to be grateful for, because it really does shift your mood, your your energy levels, your thoughts, because you have a choice. You have, you have a choice as to whether or not it's going to be a merry season or if it's going to be a stressful season. I know for me personally, I choose to have a merry season and not let the stress get to me. So... Thank you so much for listening today, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Today's guest is Julie Ritchie, all the way from the UK. Julie is a business coach who is bringing femininity back into the business place. She shares so much wonderful information on how she works with her clients, not only to help them build successful businesses, but she also helps them build financial wealth. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, Julie. How are you today? Hi, Sandy. I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so happy we're finally here on our interview. I'm really excited. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much. Now, now, where are you calling in from? So I'm in the UK, in East Sussex, the southeast of England. So if you think of London, I'm just below that. Oh, okay. All right. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I, appreci- I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. So before we jump into your story, because I always like everybody has a story before we talk about your story. So tell me a little bit about you and and what you're doing. Yeah, sure. So I have a company called Do Business Like a Woman, and I help female entrepreneurs and coaches to get clients effectively. But what I love to do is bring feminine energy into the way we do business, because I have a story of burnout, as a lot of women do. And so when I started my own business, I really wanted to answer the question, can we do this in a different way where we also look after our health and our well-being and our relationships as we build these wildly profitable businesses? And so that's really what I do. And that's what I do with my clients. And we have fun as we build the businesses. Um, We connect with clients, but we really love to be part of this new conversation around the new elevating consciousness as well and just have fun doing it. I love it. I love it. So burnout, tell me your story. (laughs) Sure. Well, I have had burnout a few times in my in my career journey. Um, The last so I actually launched my coaching business the first time seven years ago and I had a little bit of success. I had a few clients. I was traveling with my husband at the time, but I very quickly went into feast and famine mode with my coaching business. And some months I'd bring on clients and we'd literally be feasting. We were in France, so we'd be at the you know, French farmhouse table, having French stick and tomatoes and cheeses and feasting, and it would be great. And we were house sitting at the time. So then the next month there would be no clients. And then we would hardly have the gas money to get to the next house sitting gig. So after a while of this roller coaster of feast and famine income, um, we decided to come back to the UK. So my, my husband at the time, he could work. He was a chef. He is a chef. And so um, we did that and then unfortunately went through a divorce and I ended up back in my parents' tiny spare bedroom in my 30s, 
with my confidence on the floor, going through a divorce, um, had no clients, no coaching clients, a mountain of debt, and I just felt like the, the biggest loser. So I went back and got a job. And you know, it was a good thing to do because it got me back on my feet. But honestly, I was a terrible employee. And the masculine way of doing business, the linear, pushing through, hustling, it had to be done this way. And I was working with databases, which is not my area of expertise, it's not my flow. And I very quickly became burned out and I got so sick. Um, I can remember just really struggling to get out of bed. And of course I had dreams to build this business as well. I knew that I wanted to get away from being an employee and get back out, but it was just this kind of, it felt like my whole body was sick and I was so tired and it was so hard to get motivated. And I became very lethargic in my approach. In the end, the thing that got me through was the idea of going self-employed again. But during that time, I did a lot of soul searching. I did a lot of going inwards and asking, how can we do this differently? How, what is supposed to come through me? Because the first time I launched my coaching business, I really didn't know who I was and I wasn't connected with myself. So as I, I was looking outside and thinking, oh, that looks great. I'll do a bit of what she's doing. And oh, she's having champagne in front of the Eiffel Tower. I should do that. And it really wasn't internally guided. The second time I launched my business, I was asking the universe, show me, show me what is supposed to come through me. And I was so humble at that time because everything had collapsed. You know, I'd gone back, I'd got this job, I was going through a divorce, had no money, etc. And so I was just open and I was just willing to take the guidance and be led. And I followed my own intuition and I started speaking my own truth. And that was when I got the full schedule of clients. And it's five years ago, and it's been growing ever since. That's incredible. Yeah. And you know, everybody has those detours that we have to take in life, right? It's not a straight path. That's, you know, it, it's a winding road. <laughs> Isn't there a song, The Long and Winding Road? <laughs> oh, yes. It's a great song. A great yeah. song. <laughs> So, yeah, I can relate to those feelings. You start something, it doesn't work out, and you just, you know, we're so hard on ourselves, right? And we beat ourselves up, and it's just, well, you know, why do we do that? <laughs> yeah, it's just a circumstance, but I remember thinking, you know, oh, well, it's my fault, I'm a loser, you know, all these horror, the nasty voice was going crazy, and um you know, I remember it took me a really long time to get confident enough to be fully visible again. So when I relaunched my business, I actually relaunched first as a virtual assistant, and then I was an online business manager supporting other coaches, other six-figure coaches. I always knew I wanted to get back to the coaching, but it was almost like I had to build my confidence again. And But there just came a point where my dream wanted to come through so strong and I was willing to get visible again, and I was willing to stop telling the limiting stories and tell a different story and really go for it. And it was when I did that that then I transitioned into the coaching full-time and you know, really got to build the business that I'd wanted all along. That's great, that's really great. So, so what do you tell your clients when they show up like that? when they show up in limiting stories. Yeah, so I first of all ask them a lot of questions to see, you know, uh, are they aware that they're in a limiting story? Because when we're in a story, it feels very true. It just feels like what is, it's reality, right? We're like, well, I have these circumstances and I can't do anything about them. I, I work with the archetypes when I work with people and I talk about one of the pairings, the archetype pairings is the um, victim warrior S or warrior pairing. And then I've called it warrior S, you know, and that's where my warrior S framework comes from. But I identified that I was really in my victim. And what that looks like, victim ar archetype, is I have no power. You know, I have no power over a circumstance. I have no power over my life. Um, maybe we feel we're being victimized by other people. 
And no one likes to admit that they're in that place. It's not sexy, it's not glamorous, but if you can see where you are, you can start to unravel the story. So first of all, I look at how much awareness has someone got around it, and can I help them see that by asking them questions? And my job really is to shift their thinking as quickly as possible into what is possible for them. Instead of seeing all the limitations, which are easy to see, because we say, well, look at all the evidence, you know, I, I have all this debt or whatever it is for you. So, and that's real, right? That's what we say, that's real. But we forget that we create, you know, we create from inside ourselves. So I always aim to ask them questions about where are you at? Do you sit? Do they see the story first of all? And then, what else is possible? What if you chose a different thought about that? Uh, would can you see a benefit to choosing a different thought about that? We don't have to believe our thoughts. You know, just because a thought arises does not mean it's true. And as we work through that process, it just opens up enough of a chink for them to see a different possibility for themselves. And then my job from there is just really to help them build confidence in themselves. Because yes, I give them the business strategy too, but really it's about confidence in themselves to, to do what they, they wanna do. Yeah, it's so true that most, most business owners, and I think women more in particularly than men, our, our thoughts, our mindset gets in the way more than anything. Oh yes, definitely. Imposter syndrome is so big. I literally haven't met a woman entrepreneur who hasn't experienced imposter syndrome along the way. Okay, so for those that don't aren't familiar with imposter syndrome, how do you define that? Hmm. So I define that as when we think that we're not good enough to do the thing we want to do. Um, we think that we don't have enough experience. We think that we have to go learn something else. Um, it can be like we feel a fraud. So oftentimes I speak to women who are coaches and they're doing very well, but they feel like I'm a fraud, I'm a fraud and someone's going to discover that soon. You know, someone's gonna find me out and uh, <laughs> it's all gonna crumble. And that is what imposter syndrome feels like. Yeah, yeah I'm not really who I say I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they might be doing amazingly and have all these achievements, but the natural human tendency of our mind is to see what's not working rather than what is working. Right. We have to celebrate our wins. So important, especially for entrepreneurs, because we're just on to the next thing. Like, give me the next goal, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I find myself getting there too. You know, oh, yeah, I... I talked to I talked to five people this week and none of them were a good fit. Okay, but let's celebrate that you talked to five people, right? <laughs> right, right. And you you make a good point because it is so important to be process oriented. You know, when you're building a business and life that you love, because it's not going to all fall into place. And I, I wrote a post yesterday saying um, you're going to feel like you're failing most of the time. You know, it's like you're going to feel like you're failing 80% of the time and you're going to hear a lot of no's. You're going to write posts that, that nobody comments on. You're going to um, just feel as though you are failing. However, that 20% of the time that you get a yes, that you get engagement, that you launch a program that works, that is enough to build your business. Right. That's such great advice. And it's so, so true. Yes, yeah. I know. It doesn't always feel good. But. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I, I always think back to when, um, when I was finishing my book, and it was January of 2020. And I, I'm very vulnerable and, and share a lot of my life stories and, you know, uncover a lot of shame that I went through and whatnot. And there was so much self-doubt around this book, right? Because, and I know anybody who's out there who's written a book, we, we all go through that. You know, there's so much self doubt. And I found this quote, and I say this a lot on my podcast, but I think it's worth always repeating. But I, I found this quote and I printed it out and I have it on my wall and I still look at it. And it says, There are people less qualified than you doing the things that you want to do only because they decided to believe in themselves. <laughs> oh, so good, so good and on point. I mean, that's right. the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. 
and probably getting paid handsomely for it as well so right right exactly so yeah that that's just a little thing i always throw out there because that's what that's what kept me going to actually send the manuscript to my publisher and be like okay let's do this you know amazing and I think you know when when you've got something big like that like publishing writing and publishing a book just taking the next step and the next step and the baby steps and uh, writing a book is is a process right it is process oriented very so. much so very very much so so what are some of the programs that you offer yeah, to your so clients I have um, just a couple of programs in fact um, I have fierce feminine and free VIP which is my private coaching and typically someone will come and work with me for six months. It's usually um, coaches, women entrepreneurs, service-based women entrepreneurs, and they have, um, they know their niche and they have a few clients already. What they're lacking is the structure to bring in a steady stream of clients. And they really want to know how to create that consistent, predictable income. They also, they hate bro marketing, so they want to know how to market in a really authentic way um, and connect with clients in a, in a kind of different way that, that fits where things are going. Um, it's all about connection. And so I work with them privately and we get them just in their confidence, first of all, land in their power, claim their confidence, get visible. That's step one of the Warrior S framework. Um, because if we don't deal with the imposter syndrome and the confidence first, none of the strategy will actually work. You know, so often we have so much information. So yes, I do give people a strategy that works and every business is unique, every person is unique. So we've got to get them aligned with themselves. We've got to get them in their own power and confidence. Now from there, a lot of what I do is actually simplifying because when I work with somebody, typically they are like an octopus on roller skates and they're trying to be on every single social media platform and they typically haven't made six figures yet, but they're trying to be omnipresent. Some of them are still working jobs as well and it's too much. So what I do is I help them simplify. I get them to focus on one or two social media platforms and really do them well, become the queen of the platform. We get rid of a lot of the busy work and we just get them really focused. And then, you know, they just work through that. There are four client generating activities that I teach, really, really simple. And they just repeat and do them over and over. And then they get their clients, they get their 10K months and, you know, they, they go from there. So that's Fierce Feminine and Free VIP. And then I also have Fierce Feminine and Free group program, which is a um, 90 day program. And that tends to be for newer coaches. They come and learn the basics. They get coaching with me. That is always a small, intimate group. I really believe in, I love to be with people in their businesses. So linking arms and you, they get a lot of access to me. I love to really be there. You know, I really think, as I said, there's too much information overload. So it's not just about heaping more information on people. It really is about an individualized boutique approach. And that's how I love to work with people. And I think just having conversations, you know, a lot of my clients go out now and just connect with people and have conversations on social media and in person. And that's the best way to get clients. And when they're ready to scale, yes, we can scale. But it's for me and my clients, it's all about connection. It's all about connecting. Love it. Yeah, it will, well, and we need that today because of all of the information overload is just having that connection with another person and and getting to know them. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing worse than just getting an instant message and they're like, hey, you know, thanks for accepting my request. Hey, I have this program. You want to hear more about it? No, I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I know. That is my exact response. It's like, no, I don't know you, right? I don't so. know you. You just want me to... <laughs> You know, or, or the Bitcoin people, right, that are, you know, hey, you know, you know, send me your money. I'm like, sure. Where, where do I fill out the credit card form? Let me just give you money. I mean, oh, it's crazy. No. I mean, so a big question with a lot of the people that come to me is, OK, we know how to not do it. But how do we do it then? Because they're still needing to connect with people and they're still wanting to send DMs and things like that. And so what we talk about inside of my programs is how do we do that in a different way? Because 
Look, it is challenging. We're all running businesses, I get it. But what we focus on is, look, build the relationships first. Like, don't go in with like, how can I sell to this person? Go in with curiosity. Well, who is this person? How could I support this person? Just be curious about the other human being. Just make a connection, you know? And um, later down the line, when it's time to sell, they're much more likely to buy from you. The other piece is, is, you know, showing up as a leader as well, because until we do that, it's it can be difficult for people to trust and, and want to come and work with you. Absolutely. I love your approach. That's really, really amazing. So um, anything else you want to share with the listeners today? Yeah, I would like to share. So, so my company is called Do Business Like a Woman. And what I do, aside from... I help women get clients, but the reason I do that is because I know that when women entrepreneurs have money, we do good things, and I see a lot of pain in our world. So what I really do is I help women become financially independent, and I do that through the vehicle of showing them how to make money in their business, but I also think as, as, you know, well, I know you don't just, um, your audience isn't just women, it's, it's men too, but... Um, As people, I think that, yes, we need to learn how to earn money, but we also need to learn how to build true wealth. And so that's part of my approach too, is like, yes, let's get money coming in, let's get your business sorted, let's get you some clients, but then do some smart things with your money. Because I see a lot of problems out there in the world, and I think that, you know, um, entrepreneurs, good people, they need resources, and so I help them with that. And at the same time, bringing in the feminine energy, and it's not to do with being a man or a woman, we all have both types of energy, the masculine and the feminine. So what, what that's to do with is, there's been an imbalance in business, and it's all been about pushing and hustling and um, you know, very linear way of working to the detriment of health and well-being and collaboration and intuition. So I say, let's bring back those feminine energy qualities into business. You need both. You need the masculine structures, you need the systems, you need the consistency. We also need the feminine intuition. I'm big on intuition in my business. We need the collaboration. Um, We need the we instead of just the I to really make a difference in our world. And so I'm all about supporting people to build wildly profitable businesses, but also have their health and their well-being and their families and their relationship while we do it. That is the plan, yes. And you know, I still, I have to practice my own, my own tools on a daily basis because... That's yeah. the, and I, and I think that's the one thing where some coaches maybe aren't being as authentic as they could be in that we all need to show up as we're human. I'm no different than you are. We all have those thoughts that come in and we all have to work on it every single day. And uh, because we're, we're just real humans at the end of the day. And, and what you've gone through in your life helps you to help other people. Yeah. And, and it's and real. I think- that's so such a, a good point because I think so often we think we have to be this person on a pedestal and mm-hmm. that isn't what people want, you know, especially now after everything we've been through collectively. I think people are craving that connection, they're craving that realness. But it can feel a bit vulnerable sometimes sharing that with your your community, your audience, because we feel like we're meant to be this leader and have it all together. I think a true leader can be authentic and not feel that they have to have it all together all the time. Absolutely. Well said. Julie, it was such an honor to have you on my podcast today. And I just wish you all the best. You've got got a great thing to offer. Thank Thank you you. so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Julie is such a delightful woman to speak with, and I hope you were able to gain some valuable information that she shared. You can learn more about Julie on her website, which is dobusinesslikeawoman.com. So thank you so much for joining me today. To learn more about me, please visit my website at sandyscarlotta.com. You can purchase my book, Happiness Solved, Climbing 100 Steps, 
on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And as always, I hope that you and your family are safe and that your lives are filled with peace, joy, and happiness. Take care, everyone.